let's roll the disclaimer. I just want to let you know that I don't have any financial certifications, that I'm just a guy that likes to trade stocks, and all my opinions are just my own and for entertainment purposes. And um, yeah, so let's jump into things. All right, we're going to dive into this trade real quick. This was a red trade that then ended up turning green. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So in today's video, I've got it all captured. I've got the losses and the wins all caught on camera. I'm going to show those to you today. Things started off red in that things popped up. I got stopped out ultimately and then ended up taking the trade short for a really nice gain. And for a moment, I thought maybe this was going to be a monster trade. I thought it was going to keep going and that I was going to be able to play it bar by bar. So let's jump into this. As you all know, I like to look at that last 15 minute candle from the pre market. And then I'm looking to take the high or the low in sort of an opening range breakout. So when I saw this setting up, I got this range calculated. I placed my orders about five to 10 cents above and five to 10 cents below. And immediately out of the gate, I got triggered to the upside with what seemed like a pretty good push. But then we just hit a wall of, of resistance. And I'm gonna look at the charts and break that down for you here in a minute. We'll take a look at where that resistance could have come from. But you'll see how it pushes up, hits a wall, reverses immediately. And then before I can flip to my other account, I'm already triggered in. So I'm gonna show this to you right now. Let's hit play. So as things come out of the gate, we open up. And I sped this video up because it was a little longer trade. The short trade ends up taking a multiple candles. And I am using the 15 minute time frame, so I wanted to speed things up just a little bit for you. So it pushes to the upside. It looks like we're building. You can see the volume over here. We're almost a half million shares. And then right there, it pushed up, gave us kind of a kind of a laggy fill, but it worked out pretty well. And triggered us in at 97.80 for a full fill at 1,200 shares. Now I'm looking for this to go to 2.5R. If it gets there, then I'm going to move my stop loss from minus 1R to plus 2R so that I can lock in those profits. Then if the trade wants to run, I'll just play it bar by bar. So as I hit play, you're going to see this push up. And if I back it up just a little bit, I think we get as high as maybe up $130 to $150. And then it just reverses. I get my order set up. I'm going to change my stop loss. But before I can even figure things out and fire that off or get ready to, I'm already stopped out. So this happens on occasion where I set my orders high and low, and then there's just a quick rush of volume that, that throws a big wick above, triggers me in, and then almost immediately stops me out. And that's okay. That's why I designed my strategy to have the down short play in addition to the long. So if the whip happens on the upside, I can catch the short play to the downside. So I'm gonna hit play again. I'm already triggered in. So you can see, I could hardly flip to my other account before I get uh, before I get triggered in, which is right here. So I'm in the other account now. I'm triggered in short at 97.33 for a full fill of 1,200 shares. You can see we've already broken below this low. We've already broken this pivot low right here. So the next target would be to take out this pivot, which is right around 96.80. So it starts to push down. I go ahead and order the, uh, set up the stop loss and get it reconfigured so that I can move it to 2R. But this thing was really saggy. You can see this thing push down into the 300s, then push up and take me back negative, even as much as like $120 in the hole. It looks like it's going to stop me. I'm kind of expecting it to happen. It just looks like it's going to doji out for that 15-minute candle. But the volume just keeps pushing it down. It just can't quite get its legs under it. So it starts to drop a little more. It'll come down and threaten those lows again. The pivot low keeps threatening that. And then eventually it's going to break through and start to access the, the um, after-hour session pivot low from the day before. And you'll see this kind of play out. It's just kind of negative, positive, negative, positive, um, red, 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 green, 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 just back and forth. And so right now we're down one R, we're down $300 on the day because of the failed long position. So now we're looking to, to cover that up with a nice two R win on the downside. And you can see how long this is taking. It's, it's just 
hopping up and down. But referencing from earlier in the week and from last week, and I'll put a video up here if you haven't seen this one. This doesn't bother me anymore because I changed my rules to specifically say that I just stay in the trade. I either take the full loser or I take the full winner, but nothing in between. That's really changed my trading. And if you've implemented that, drop a comment below. Let me know if you're using the sort of all or none full loss or full win, nothing in between. Because a lot of times you take profit early and then it works and goes in your favor. And I could have taken this off. You know, there are multiple opportunities to take a few hundred dollars profit and call it a day. Right now we're at 325. Now we're in the fours. You can see it kind of speeding up. It kind of gets violent and whippy to the downside, and then it slowly retraces. And then it's violent again, and then it retraces. And now you can see I'm down again, I'm down almost $100. Now we're green, back to 100. And it's just hanging around and hanging around. And ultimately, um, we get into the next candle, which doesn't happen very often in my trades. I usually don't get into the second 15 minute candle. This clearly is not a scalp trade. This is a sort of a drawn out intraday trade. And right now we're up 200. And I'm just watching those pivots. I'm just watching this pivot low and I'm watching this pivot low. Once you get a break of those levels, a lot of times you'll get a flush to the downside where you can consider taking profit if that's your strategy. Right there, it broke again. It's getting a little more comfortable being beyond this pivot. So we're up to 10. You can notice we're not really going red anymore. We're staying green. It's sort of establishing itself sort of below that 97.25 area. And then now we're up in the fives, fours, fives. I'm starting to think, okay, maybe we're going to be able to take this thing off. So I've got my order window up ready to fire it. We're up uh, about 450, 460, just trying to get 750 on that P&L because that's 2.5R. Now I'm going to stop this real quick. So you can see we're up 576 on the P&L, which is great. We just need to get to 2.5R first. And you can see we opened up at the second candle. So what I ultimately want to see on this is I want to see this candle break the low of the initial. That'll help give me a little more confirmation to say, okay, it looks like we are going to go lower. And if it breaks that, then I want to see it ultimately break this pivot low from yesterday's after hours activity. So let's fire it up again. So there's the break. We've now broken. We're now up 650, 750. So we went 780s, so I went ahead and fired that off. And now I'm looking for it just to drop, and it doesn't drop. Same thing, it's like Groundhog Day around here. Seems like we've had many, many days recently where I fire that thing off at 2R, and then ultimately it ends up backtracking, stopping me out. But nonetheless, nice 2R day to the downside, 1R loss on the upside-ish. So ended up stacking about an R, of profit for the week. And I want to flip over now and just show you the actual price action that's happening. And let me do one thing. I just want to pull some of these guys off. And we'll talk about what happened today and sort of some trade management stuff. Because some of you might be saying to yourself, okay, that's great, but look what ultimately happened. It came all the way down as low as 96.31. And the tough thing about this situation is that once you get this down move, which we were part of, and we got into the second candle here, look at this wick. It actually came all the way back above my entry price. So there's really no way to defend against that type of price action when you're someone who believes in having a hard stop in the system. I'm never going to go without a stop. I think that when you do that, you get in trouble because you could lose internet your broker, your platform toss could go down. And if it's offline and you can't access it, you have no stop in the books. So when you call to say, hey, I took a huge loss, I was supposed to get stopped out. They're going to say, well, prove it. Where were you supposed to be stopped out? And you're going to say, well, I didn't have a stop in the book, so I don't know. But if you have a stop in the book and it somehow passes it, they'll always honor it. They're really good about that. So what ultimately happened was it pushed down here and then opened up, came all the way back, then got selling pressure all the way back down and ultimately 
had a really nice down move, which would have been, you know, really profitable. But there's no way we would have been a part of any of this because this back tracement or retracement was just too great for my strategy. And we couldn't follow up bar by bar because obviously it would have been stopped out. Ideally, it would have been nice to see this come down, close, then open the next candle right about here and then drop down and never come back. That way I can move my stop loss to the top of that candle. And then the successive candles keep stopping at lower, sort of stepwise lower as the candles open and close. But this was the 15 minute time frame on AMD. Um, it was a nice trade. Too bad we got whipped in on this. That causes a really quick one R loser. But then as we went short, we took two R to the downside. Ended up putting one R in the bank today, which is really great. It's been an amazing month. And remember, on January 1st or 2nd, I'm going to put out a video doing a full recap on the month of December. I'm going to show you the number of trades. I'm going to show you the total profit, total losses. I'm going to show you all the ins and outs of my TraderView.com account. We're going to filter it by December. We're going to break it all down. So turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss that video. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to be part of our private Facebook group, go to the YouTube banner. There's a link there. You can click it. It'll send me a notification and I'll approve you so you can be part of our 180 plus member group where we talk stocks, day trading options, anything, anything surrounding the market. So go ahead and feel free to join us there. If you have questions for me, drop those below. If your day was good or bad, drop me a comment. Let me know how you're doing. If you're having trouble with your management strategy or back testing or any of these topics that we get into trade management related, let me know because I want to help you talk through it. And we can even take it into the private Facebook group and see if anyone in there has had experiences similar to yours so we can help to get you all figured out. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Oh, and this was trade number 117 for those of you that are following the series. Trade 117, 116, and 117 today. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.